Hi, and welcome back to the episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and today's episode, we get a little more uh, deeper and some philosophical here. Um, I'm going to get into some more fan mail, okay? And But the thing is, when I was going through my topic of the fan mail, I really had a question that was in the back of my mind and that uh, I wanted to kind of express to you is that, well, you know, we did all this fan stuffing and that kind of stuff and whatnot, um, but I didn't really give you a really like, a true... Um, representation or true picture of when we got the fan subs out and sort of what the um you know the uh, sort of the environment the atmosphere uh when all these fan subs started coming out and what what else was sort of out there and i want to give a sort of a time frame of when all these sort of events sort of came through and just sort of try to match up certain things that we do sort of you know know or sort of kind of were associated with and try to link the time and the date with that. And I thought, you know, these fa uh, these fan letters I'm going through really um, help lock that in, right? They, 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 they have, you know, they, they basically are time dated and they, um, they, they, they mark, uh, you know, certain events that had happened. So these are really good markers for me. So I thought maybe I should make a few episodes which, which, you know, which mark these out and kind of put these in perspective of how, um, you know, what kind of a time frame that we're talking about it and then you know link you can link up the dates with things that are happening at this particular time right and then you can kind of see what the world and the kind of thing is around it um relate to the events that are in these um these letters okay so again uh i just want to remind you to just go down below click like and click subscribe um i thank all of you for uh, you know uh, pushing me past my my last goal that i just hit which is uh four four thousand view hours so now um, I'm fully um, uh, accepted as a YouTube affiliate now, so uh, you know. Although I know I know I know I don't have the view numbers and that kind of stuff. That that's not important. Um, it's just it's just another goal that YouTube had set out, and I finally have made it. So I thank you all for that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with a series of uh, letters and uh, fan, uh, and I'll put that on the screen, and I'll sort of quickly mark out those points that I, that, that I wanted to make, and then sort of. Um, elaborate on the points and uh, mark especially things like the date and what had happened on these particular dates as written in these letters okay and I'll really help you kind of and then when you kind of go back and kind of you know put them in the timeline you can kind of you know see um, you know what had happened and what the what the focus is on all this all right so without further delay let's begin Okay, so I'm going to be the letter. Um, this is a letter from a Brent Bowman out of uh, Ellettsville, um, Indiana. Uh, this is from February 12th, uh, 1981, also to um, uh, Brent Brown. Um, I write down at the very bottom here, uh, thank you very much for your donations. Sometimes you know, I, don't, I don't require donations, but if someone sends an extra little bit, that's great. It really helps out. I suppose every little bit helps again. I don't require a donation. It, it does speed things up. Uh, besides, I'm so far in debt that there isn't much in hope in hell to break even. Recently, I was preparing my 1990 tax return. I cleared 10,000 k for income this year. I put 2,000 into a retirement savings plan and then spent 3,000 on doing Orange Road stuff. God, I must be stupid. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so I, I remember in, in, um, in, in uh, 1990, I remember I, got, I just started my part-time job working at Radio Shack, okay, and, um, you know, also obviously um, I'm basically working at essentially minimum wage, and, um, you know, Radio Shack is not a glorious job either, but, uh, you know, they gave, you know, gave me some, um, uh, you know, some uh, spending money, okay, and so, yeah, it's, it's, you, know, you use, like, you know, literally $3,000 of it to, uh, you know, um, do and sub you know get the lasers for orange road to, you know get you know start getting all the equipment and that kind of stuff and then actually start sub it out and then yeah so, you know, this time you know when you correct for inflation and that stuff you know it's it's actually pretty uh you know it's, it's a pretty good healthy chunk of uh of change so you know considering that uh, you know all the rest of the things i you know you <laughs> you know that's uh yeah you know you, you know you, there's a, not a lot left afterwards right um when you do that Okay, so in another letter that I write back to him, February 14th, 1981, um, I'm requesting a bunch of other uh, tapes and stuff from him. So this is basically when I look through his tape list 
what does he have that might interest me and then uh, make an order for that. So what, uh, what, what he uh, had on his list that, was, that seemed interesting was something called Dirty Pear Parody, um, Fists Full of Pasta. So this is uh, um, the uh, funny uh, um, joke uh, the dubs that came out for the Dirty Pear. Again, I made an episode uh, previous about that. Uh, you can go back and check out uh, you know, some of the, the comedy that ensued in doing a joke dub. Um, and uh, he also had a whole bunch of just had several movies. Uh, see, there's a movie one, four, uh, some OEVAs um, that were also subtitled. Okay, um, so that would seem kind of interesting. So I ordered those ones, and uh, a subtitle copy of Vampire Hunter D, and then a whole bunch of other um, miscellaneous things. Now, Vampire Hunter D was really inter- interesting because, you know. Um, Streamline Pictures only came out with a dub copy uh, way back when. And I don't even think actually it even came out at this particular time. It still took a little bit more time before they actually I uh, think did the licensing and actually did the dub version of this. So the subtitle copy actually re- remained in, in, in circulation for a while. Um, so what else to ask for? Um, he has the Dan Cougar OVAs, uh, Blue Sonnet One and Two, and Dominion Tank Police. Now of course. You gotta realize that those ones would be probably you know straight in in Japanese with no English subtitle, no English dub, okay. And and you know that's still very important because you know, I think I was a very big fan of um, uh, Dan Cougar and I didn't know what the other ones were, so I just said, oh, that would help. Throw them on the list, and uh, you know get those anyway and have a look at them. You know, what I want you to note on this uh, next letter is note the date. It's five twenty ninety one, so May twentieth, nineteen ninety one. Um, my last letter was February 14th, okay, so Valentine's Day. Um, so obviously three months have gone by before when I sent him his, his letter and, you know, asking for Vampire D and, and, and a whole bunch of Urusa at service. And then now, three months later, he's sent those tapes back. So uh, I just wanted to illustrate that, <clears throat> you know, this was pretty typical okay um it did take a long time for people to do dubbing and that kind of stuff because maybe it's not everyone has two vcrs lined up maybe people don't have their dubbing vc uh, dubbing stuff you know really handy you know in this case i think he was trying to get better co- quality copies to do the dubbing and that kind of stuff and whatnot so um yeah sure there was some delays and that kind of stuff but yeah just to give an indication that you know when you ask for something like you know let's say hey, hey uh, uh i'll trade you a copy of vampire d or something you no, know, this isn't. You no, know, there's no such uh, you know thing as Amazon Prime or anything like that. You know, this isn't going to be um, you know a one or two day ordeal. This is going to be a several you know day, most likely mo- you know several week sort of investment in time. Okay, and this is how you know the speed of anime distribution worked. It it was not quick. Okay, you you know it's not snap snap snap. Um, you know. Uh, you know, you, 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 as soon as you ask for it, you, you're going to get it, okay? Uh, this is a very, very slow process, which, again, for a lot of people, you know, uh, this could be a problem when you get really addicted to a series and you really want to, like, you know, oh my god, I'm out of tapes, I need to get my next tape to get my fix. You know, it may take you several, you know, days to weeks, even months, to actually get your tapes back, uh, uh, you, know, to, you know, to get, you know, to... Uh, watch and continue your thing. So, so you know, sometimes, sometimes uh, binging was a little bit hard to do. So definitely, uh, it really ma- ma- makes people appreciate um, that they you know, the time and effort that it takes to you know to, to, to do um, tape distribution at this time. Okay, so you can see here that yes, uh, he f- sent uh, two tapes. Uh, one with some Uruzrat uh, Sura on it, and uh, then the second tape had his Vampire Hunter D. And then uh, some interesting stuff he threw on there, some cream lemon, um, uh, Emery Bunny, and uh, let's see, Summer Wind, which are, you know, again, no translation, uh, and, and but this is probably, probably the first time I've ever seen these particular episodes of Cream Lemon, so it's got, it's got really good. And then he threw on a little surprise, Daikon 4 and Daikon 3 animation, just... So those were the, the you know the, the really snippet clips of uh, of uh, early guy next um, animations and kind of stuff in there. And that was really kind of cool because right? that's what people did. They always really you know there's a little that end a little bit of space at the end of the tape and they throw little snippets of stuff on there. Again, that's how I did like uh, AMVs and that kind of stuff. Uh, I made a tape full of nothing but those uh, with the sole purpose of sticking them on the end of the tapes. You know, um, and then. Of course, he put his his order. He ordered for Vampire Princess Mew one through four. So obviously, we you know, I guess we just completed 
uh, episode four for Vampire Prince of Mew, and so now that's still available. And again, this is before Anime Ego licensed it, so, so this is still in that little gap. I don't think Anime Ego did all the licensing until 92. So, <clears throat> again, this is the more of that shelf life, I'm telling you, where, um, you know, Vampire Prince of Mew was very popular. Um, you know, we did, we did all the subtitles for all four episodes, and, you know, it's something that popular, we knew that, you know, some company, you know, in this case happens to be Anime Ego, will eventually license it, and then we'll basically get it, you know, <clears throat> take the, uh, ours off distribution. So, so this is what I mean by shelf life, expiry date, as it were. So, we have was uh, still available at this particular time. Uh, and then the Pat Labor, the movie, uh, we also did a subtitle for that one. So, again, uh, you know, the movie was very popular. Uh, and you know, preceded the TV series, so I guess a lot of people were asking us for that at this particular time. Okay, so here's uh, my reply letter. Um, let's see, it's dated June 6, 1991, so this is a reply. Um, uh, here are the tapes that you requested back. Uh, thanks for the UI stuff and the Vampire Hunter D. So, if I remember right, I ordered off from his tape list. He had some, I guess, fan sub videos of Udushetzer the movies and the Vampire Hunter D in a fan sub version. So, um, you know, this clearly shows to me that, that obviously I'm not the only person out there doing um, fan subs. Um, sure, I'll be maybe doing like more titles and basically more, uh, you know, a little quicker than everyone else. But, you know, you know, there are other people out there, do, you know, doing their version of it. Um, the thing I wanted to point out was this one here. He thanks for the Capricorn, uh, Capricorn guide. I found that rather funny. Now, um, uh, the, the one of the things that a lot of people are always commenting about is that, well, you know, if I got the laserdisc for let's say um, Vampire Hunter D, um, um, is there not a way that I can get like the script for Vampire Hunter D, and then I can just sort of you know watch it and read it by myself, or maybe if I wanted to fan sub it myself, maybe um, you know I could take the script and then I could you know apply the fan subs and that kind of stuff to it, and. You know, you're right, it is theoretically possible to do that, but it's very difficult. And the reason why is that this time, again, we're at 91, right? So we're still four years before Windows 95 comes out. So can you can imagine that the fact that there is no internet, you know, there's no, uh, you know, there's no, you know, Firefox or, you know, uh, not even, uh, you know, Internet Explorer, not even Netscape, okay, it even exists at this time, right? So there's no web browser or anything like that. There's no way that people, you know, have access to internet um, at home because there's just, just no interface for that, right? Um, the only way that people actually had internet was, was obviously um, um, through their company, right? So they'd have to be part of a school and you had like the dot gov uh, or dot um, edu at the end of your um, email address and, and you'd be part of a government installation. You know whether or not it's a uh, uh, you know a, a part of the military, part of the um, you know like NASA or something like that, or part of you know the actual um, you know government of, of of something. Then you'd have the .gov uh, at the end of your address, okay? But uh, you know, otherwise, yeah, you really had no access to the internet, okay? And as such, there's no way for you to even you know browse and get that data if you wanted it, right? Um, sure, you can maybe do a dial-up like a BBS or something. You know, most of the things are, are, are like you know. Um, I can tell by the document that I'm re written here. It is done on a Apple II uh, Plus, or maybe an Apple IIe, um, printed on a uh, Roland uh, 1010 dot matrix printer. Okay, so we're talking like very very old technology, and so most of the things they're doing are obviously off of a, you know like maybe like a BBS. Even if I had a script for like Orange Road and that kind of stuff, and it was, you know, just a standard, you know, you know, couple, couple K that kind of stuff, it would still take you, you know, like minutes upon half an hour to maybe even an hour, depending on your baud rate, to download something like this. So even if you had access to to, to, to some sort of data transfer and that stuff, it would take, still take you forever to do to get it, right? So the reason I wanted to mention that is because the Capricorn guide, okay, indicates to me that. This was an era where a lot of information was available in print, okay? So there's fan clubs and that kind of stuff and, and, and whatnot, but there's also these, everyone was, was self-publishing anime, quote, books, okay? And this Capricorn Guide was one of those type of things. It was basically a book that contained a lot of, you know, scripts and summaries and that kind of stuff for various different types of anime. So that if you got a copy of Vampire Hunter D, 
um, in straight Japanese. You can use one of these books to go flip to and see if it has map under D, and then, then you could then go, oh, okay, yeah, you know, this guy such and such does this, D then goes and does this, and th then, you know, you can follow along using the book uh, to then watch the anime. And so this is another indication that, yeah, um, scripts and that kind of stuff were maybe not available in an electronical form, but definitely in print it is possible. Okay. Um, I also write down this letter. Um, uh, I threw in an extra tape. Uh, let's see. Uh, as for the tapes, I sent you three instead of two tapes back. Um, the last one was a bunch of bubble crises that I just finished. I just wanted to slip these out uh, before the uh, the public announcement for uh, Anime Eagle closed their deal. Okay. So at this point, um, uh, you know, it was sort of known that uh, you know Anime Eagle was. Thinking of getting Bubble and Crisis, you know the the rumor has it, you know the you know the insiders, shall we say, yeah, knew that. And I'm looking at this 1991. Um, if I remember right, they didn't close the deal until '92. So um, I wanted to pull this out because this gives you an indication of something called expiry. Like, I always talk about this, like you know, in our day when you're doing uh, fan subbing onto media, there's something called an expiry date, a shelf life, and that is that. We knew that if you did a very famous and very popular title, let's say, so for example, like Bubblegum Crisis, you knew that it probably had a very short shelf life, meaning you could do the fan sub now, but you know some major company is going to go and pick that up, and then he's going to license it, and then basically, uh, you know, you're going to have to stop distribution of your uh, of you know of your version because you know they've done it, and that's you know our understanding. We want to basically follow the spirit of the law as well as the letter of the law because I said, you know, what we're doing is not exactly, you know, uh, black and white, right? We're in a very, very big gray area and we want to basically sponsor and help um, uh, anyone who is uh, actually trying to do it legitimately. So, you know, uh, even though that someone would get a, you know, a rough copy of, of uh, let's say, a bubble crisis from us for uh, any, um, you know, from us through fan something, you know, uh, you know, we had hoped that uh, these people would eventually go out and get an anime ego version of uh, Bone Crisis because it'd be again quality's gonna be better, especially when they uh, you know came out with you know essentially the you know these um, their subtitling things onto like uh, you know D two masters and then therefore you know even the VHS tapes are gonna be even higher quality than, than the ones that we had, uh, especially when even before they got done doing laser discs and DVDs at, 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 in, in the end afterwards. Okay, so again, um, you know. There's this big sediment to support uh, the uh, anime companies when they do that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, th so I just wanted to illustrate that yes, um, you know, because of you know, uh, we, even though we do these different type of fan subs and that kind of stuff, there is this element of expiry uh, that happens. Now you'll also realize that Bubblegum Crisis, okay, um, it still came out back in like the 80s, right? So 1986, 87. Um, when actual bubble crisis came out so you can see even you know we're at 91 and anime ego still hasn't even fully licensed it right now so we were talking so these titles are already you know four you know three four maybe even get you know you know approaching five years before they actually get it licensed and get it onto the shelf and uh, this is where the gap of where fan subs start filling it in right you know we're in there we're we get it done and uh, you know, uh, people are able to you know to, to get they get copies of between the time they you know they're, they're negotiating the licenses and that kind of stuff for them. Okay, um, that is the you know when I refer to shelf life or the you know expiry date of fan subs. This is what I mean. I uh, flip up to the top of the letter here, and it says dated September twenty fourth, nineteen ninety one. Okay, so showing the list here. So basically, um, uh, you know, he's at, I guess ordered a bunch of tapes from me, and uh, this, you know, these are his requests that he wants for the next order and batch, batch of things that he wants. And you just see right up at the top of the list here. So um, he asks for Maze on a Cock episode uh, one to uh, I guess twenty four. So the first six tapes of Orange Row uh, or of uh, Maze on a Kaku. And uh, in the second box, he's asked for another batch of tapes here. Uh, Gundam 008, uh, the whole series uh, one through six. Uh, Assemble insert, which is a, you know, another little cute sort of uh, OVA that they did. Um, obviously, the first volume of Pat Labor, the P1 series of OVA. So that's um, that's uh, three uh, one P1 um, OVA. So the original uh, the 13 OVAs of Pat Labor, and then of course f three of the episodes for the TV series of Pat Labor in this um, 
set, okay? Uh, the next one is the Orange Road movie. So obviously, we, uh, so what this basically shows us and tells me is that as of 1991, we had already completed all of Orange Road, and it looks like we've got a whole section of Maison Akaku already done. So the first at least six volumes of Maison Akaku. In addition to all those little things we've done, that we've also done things like uh, all these short OVAs, uh, Gundam. Uh, sample insert. Uh, obviously, we finished the Orange Road movie since we, you know, we've done Orange Road. Uh, you know, we did all the OVAs and then we did Orange Road afterwards. And I know that yeah, and, and the fact that we're starting Pat Labor means that we probably finished or come very close to finishing all of Maison Ikaku at this time as well. So, um, you know, so just judging by the fact that you now, from my my local memory, I remember that, you know I, I got my subsonic system, you know, in the late late eighties, it was like eighty nine, ninety or whatever. That's when I was really in that sort of experimental phase of trying to figure out how to get the subtel, you know, that kind of doing. But so this indication is for that, that you know, just from there, okay, nineteen ninety ish or so, we say. Uh, to like 91, so we're almost at the end of 91. We've already finished like an entire series of Orange Road. We could be actually very close to finishing like an entire series of Maison Ikaku as well. Um, in just a short span of like, you know, uh, two years. And we already said, we we're on the verge of beginning Pat Labor. We've already done a whole bunch of small OVAs, like uh, you can see like Gundam and that kind of stuff. So this is a lot of material uh, to, to be done. Um, and uh, some people have a little, you know, task, you know, kind of grasping at this, you know, like how does, like, you know, you, you, you think of things like Naruto, right? Like it's got like, you know, literally hundreds of episodes, okay? One Piece, hundreds and hundreds of episodes, right? Um, and, uh, you know, even, you know, the, the, the digital fan subbers, they, you know, they, they, they do uh, their fan subbing of that and different groups are doing it and they say, well, well you know, they, they've done lots and lots of episodes, but you have to think of, of, of the time span that, that, that they've done this. Cause, so, I mean, I'm looking at this and going, okay, so, you know, we're looking at 48 episodes of Orange Road. We're looking at, you know, 96 episodes of Maison Ikaku. We're looking at, um, you know, a handful of o Mugitate OVAs, the movie, you know, obviously some fa fairly big um, things like, uh, you know, this Gundam, Simple Insert, you know, the really small series out there's probably like Golf Horse and, and, um, you know, Bogum Crisis in there. So we're probably talking about better close of maybe 200 and, uh, let's see, 96 episodes of 48. So probably close to 200 episodes of something at this time. And we're only at 1991. Okay. You know, so not even, I, you know, let's just, you know, you know, just, just, you know, off the tip of the top, I'm thinking maybe not, not even two years, like a year and a half probably. So, let's say about 500 days you know we've already got 200 episodes of stuff already out there in essentially 500 days so you know we're like we're, we're burning at a pace about like a, an episode every three days so you know if you think of the equivalent of doing like naruto you'd have to do basically two episodes uh, a week of naruto every every day for almost two years right a year and a half to keep up with the at uh, the pace that we're putting these things out. So this is just you know because this gives me a slight indication of just how fast and how much fan subbing we're doing at this time, and just how much uh, you know ground or, you know that we got we have to to work at in order to make up what you know what we're doing. Okay, um, that's what the, the, this part of the letter shows me. Okay, and I hope you found that really fascinating. The you know the how. Uh, things that are now, you know, coming into picture. Um, you can kind of get a better view of, of, of what the environment was like, what the, you know, what the anime community and the, the scene was like, uh, with, you know, through the use of these letters and, uh, you know, help, helping you basically, you know, put together the events with the dates, okay? Because, again, you know, I remember, you know, through the 90s, uh, it seemed to be a big blur to me. But uh, these uh, letters and these, uh, you know, these little things uh, that, that help me date and lock down the times, are really really useful okay so again you know, don't forget to you know, click like and subscribe and you know following very soon don't forget to keep track of the anime giveaway i'm going to be uh, basically got a whole bunch of things that, be, that i'm giving away uh and uh i'll be giving you the shipping instructions uh very shortly so make sure you have your notifications on because as soon as i put that down i will start then taking first come first serve um what the items are that you want for free okay all right so until next time, see you again.